my name is Tom Chi. I spent two years of my life building the user experience team for the Google X division of Google. And I, it's a place I affectionately t uh, called the Department of Science Fiction because of the futuristic nature of the types of projects we took on. Self-driving cars, Google Glass, and other things that you'll see soon enough. So for those who haven't heard of this project, this is what Google Glass looks like. It allows you to overlay digital things into your eyesight while still maintaining being part of a world. So if I you know, were to pull out my cell phone and look into it, I'm basically out of this world now. Like I'm in my own little cell phone, tablet world, what have you. But Google Glass has the vision of allowing us to, to continue to be in the world, uh, but also have access to the digital things that, that we need and we love. Now, I'm going to ask you a really simple question about Google Glass. How would you prototype this experience? How long do you think it would take you to make the first working version of a heads-up display? OK, a little bit on the long side. The answer is one day. And here's what it looked like. So basically, the, the magic piece is the coat hanger. The coat hanger, I bent it in a specific shape. And the top loop goes around your neck, and then the bottom loop rests against your chest. And it allows me to, to carry a piece of plexiglass on which a little sheet protector. So these are the things that you put your book reports in so they don't get wet. I literally got it at the drugstore. Uh, you know, have it out at the end of the plexiglass. And then it gets projected onto with the Piker projector that's connected to a netbook. And using this setup, within one day, we were already able to start having the experience of what it looks like to have digital things overlaid on your physical world be able to move around with it, and also use the netbook to try out tons and tons of different ideas around software. Now, after you start getting something like that working, you know, a really important problem comes up. Like, you're, you're wearing this thing on your head. It's, it's like a pair of glasses. So you don't have a mouse or a keyboard or a touch screen, all the ways that you're used to interacting with a, with a machine. So, we thought for a second, well, maybe we could do something like you know, what was shown in Minority Report. So for, the, for folks who haven't seen that, basically Tom Cruise is manipulating software with his hands in front of his face, and photos are flying over here, and his emails in over here, and so on and so forth. So that's the same question again. How long do you think it would take to, to have the real experience of doing something like that? Two years. Two years, OK. <laughs> Somebody asked, said one day. 45 minutes. <laughs> so here's how it looks. So you wear the thing that we saw the first time because you need some way to go project things. But what happens is we got two hair bands, which I think was the hardest part. We had to go ask people for their hair bands. But you, you put one hand in each hair band. And attached to that hair band, we tied a, a, a fishing line. And the fishing line goes over the top of a whiteboard and then goes down to this little assembly that's taped to the floor. And what this means is every time I move my hand in any direction, it adds tension to the line. And it, it, it does the following with the assembly on the floor. So the other end of the fishing wire is attached to a chopstick. And uh, it's not because I'm Asian. There's just a cafeteria nearby. <laughs> I don't just carry chopsticks on me. But, um, but I tied it to the end of a chopstick. I, I clipped it into a binder clip and then put it over a pen. And basically what happens then is when you move your arm and it produces tension on the wire, chopstick comes down like a lever and clicks a presentation clicker. One hand moves the presentation forward, the other hand moves the presentation backwards. So this was built in 45 minutes and that meant shortly afterwards we were having experiences like looking at an image gallery and saying, next image, next image, previous image. Or looking at our emails and saying, let me click into this email, let me click reply now. And this was exactly the experience of of what it was like to go control software with your hands. And ultimately, what it taught us is we probably shouldn't have this in the product. We learned a lot of things about, uh, about the social awkwardness of it and some of the ergonomic aspects of it that you couldn't have like, figured out ahead of just thinking about it. And you know, ergo, the second uh, prototyping rule, which is doing is the best kind of thinking. They teach you to think a lot in school, but I think it's a little bit uh, overrated. <laughs> now, last example. Uh, you know, Actually, Google's not the first team that's, that's tried to go make something like this. And if you search for heads-up display, you get tons of images of teams that have built various uh, systems like this. But I can tell you at a glance that none of these pieces of hardware are comfortable to wear for more than 15 minutes, except for maybe the helmet over there. But then you got to wear a helmet. <laughs> um, so you know, how would you go figure out a way to go wear something like this comfortably? 
The answer is really basic materials. Modeling wire, paper, clay, and using something like this is able to make something that looked like a pair of glasses really quickly. I cut out pieces of clay that weighed exactly the same amount as the electronic components that, that we were talking about putting on the device, wrapped it in paper so you didn't get clay on your face, and uh, then taped it to the modeling wire in various places to go experiment with, with how a pair of glasses could fit on you. And we discovered something really important then. Like, if you look at this drawing on the bottom, it turns out that um, the weight of a pair of glasses is actually mostly perceived through how much weight is on your nose. And it also turns out that your ears can carry a lot more weight than your nose, and that's a totally different experiment. You could ask me about that. Um, but because of that fact, it, if you put weight behind your ears, it allows your ear to go act like the fulcrum of a lever, and it then takes weight off of your nose on the front. And actually, you guys can try this now, anybody with glasses, if you push very gently on the back of your, your glasses, you'll find actually your glasses feel tremendously lighter. Now, this meant that we not only discovered something interesting about how to go, you know, uh, that's useful for developing a device like this, we actually discovered something pretty fundamental that had never been discovered about glasses, period. So if you have really heavy glasses, you can do this and you will be more comfortable. Now, the last point I want to make is about two types of learning. Because through the process of rapid prototyping, you're able to learn very, very quickly. But it's a very specific type of learning. You know, the, the, the type of learning that you usually learn in school, I call book learning. It comes from what humanity already knows, and it's a necessary foundation for you guys to go explore the world. But there's a totally different type of learning, which I call expansive learning. And this is the learning that you do on behalf of humanity, right? You are creating something new, you are expanding into the possibilities, and you're building that sphere of, of human knowledge in that process. And we think about these things, and as soon as you hear, like, okay, the infinite realm of possibilities beyond the sphere of human knowledge, you might be thinking, well, there's the scientist at, at the Large Hadron Collider and who have these amazing instruments. Like, that's, that's their job, right? But the truth is, is that this, this action is available to all of us. You know, it's, it's not just for the scientist, it's also for the poet or the songwriter that expresses an emotion for the first time in a unique way. It's also for the person that has an amazing business idea that, that they're certain can help millions of lives. And it's the realm of using paper, clay, and tape in order to go find a new insight in an ancient technology. So now that you guys know a lot about rapid prototyping, I'm, I'm excited to see what you'll do with it. Thank you.